Welcome to Eye Contact. I'm Sean Hennehan. We're talking with Dr. Susan Jacob about manual small incision cataract surgery. Welcome, Dr. Jacob. Thanks, Sean. It seems like manual incision, small incision cataract surgery offer some of the advantages of FACO without the FACO. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's true, Sean. Uh, it's actually not machine dependent at all. So you could just do it uh, without a machine at all and get all the results that you would do with a FACO. So uh, it's got uh, some of the advantages of FACO emulsification in terms of uh, having a small or at least a smaller incision, uh, which is self-sealing, so it doesn't require sutures, so it's sutureless again. And it's very minimally astigmatic, as induces, it induces very minimal astigmatism if you do it the right way, you know, the right length of the incision. The, the small incision. Yes, exactly. Hmm. So that's a great part of it. Also, it's very cheap. It's economical as compared to FACO, and uh, it's fast. It's, uh, it's really fast if you're uh, kind of hmm. practice it enough times. It, well, maybe you could take us through a, a typical procedure then. Sure. So uh, what you do is uh, you generally would, unlike FACO, prefer to do it under peribulb by anesthesia. Though there are people who also do it under topical combined with a little bit of subtene on anesthesia. Mm. Um, uh, you uh, take a superior rectus brittle suture, you cut the conjunctiva, make a phonics based conjunctival flap. And then there's this most crucial tunnel, uh, which is all important for small incision cataract mm. surgery. Mm. So the tunnel is actually an inverted trapezoid in the sense that it's smaller on the scleral side and then it, as it goes forwards, it uh, kind of fans out or expands and it's much larger on the corneal side. So it's got uh, two components. There's a scleral component to the tunnel and a corneal component. And the scleral component starts about two millimeters behind the limbus and the corneal component goes about 1.5 millimeters into the limbus, into the cornea. So uh, what you're talking about is a tunnel that's about 3.5 millimeters wide. And at the, at the outer part on the scleral side, it's about six millimeters long. And on the inner side, it's larger, about 8 millimeters. But the beauty of this tunnel is that since it's, with, it's, it's small and you can have different shapes, it's self-sealing because of the construction of the tunnel. So you generally don't need to put sutures. So in some situations, you might put sutures just to neutralize astigmatism. You say in your article in Eurotimes that this is a very safe procedure, particularly for the uh, brown and black cataracts. What is, how do you account for the safety? Yeah, so you know, uh, uh, one of the challenges when you do phaco emulsification is a brown or a black cataract, you know, because there's so many problems that can be associated with this. First of all, it's a very dense nucleus, so you're going to end up using much more phaco energy there. Your effective phaco time is going to be much larger mm. or much more than what you would do have if you were doing a softer cataract. And this is also a large nucleus, so that you're dealing with larger pieces and therefore you end up working somewhat more closer to the endothelium than you would with a softer cataract. And so all these things combined together uh, end up uh, having a greater chance of more endothelial loss. In addition to that, consider also the factors that, uh, you know, these large dense nuclei can be associated with other problems such as a small pupil, you know, pseudo exfoliation, less space in the back to work around. So all these things make FACO a really challenging situation. And in these cases, exactly where it's where, uh, where SICS really scores over FACO, because that's a beautiful technique. You know, the entire nucleus comes out in one piece. If you want, you could section it and then make the small incision even smaller. So you could make, potentially make, uh, you know, section it manually, manually using a snare or using the bisector technique or the trisector technique and make those pieces uh, into two or three, the nucleus, and then bring out those pieces individually as well. Now, I think many people think of this as a procedure preferred in the developing world, but there are many reasons you could potentially use this in the developed world. Are there courses and so on? Yeah, actually, yes. Uh, very interestingly, we conducted a course on small incision cataract surgery uh, yesterday uh, on invitation from ESCRS, and it was wonderful to know that the amount of interest in SICS is actually increasing much more in the developed world. We have followed that up with a wet lab, and it was completely full. It was a fully booked wet lab where a lot of young people came wanting to learn this technique. So yes, it is picking up a lot of uh, interest in the developed world, mostly because there are many situations where you wouldn't want to do a FACO. Mm. You would want to do a SICS in the first place or also use it as a bailout procedure. Let's mm -hmm. say you're doing FACO and you're in trouble and you don't know, uh, you know that you're not going to be able to finish it as a FACO. In that case, this acts as a nice backup procedure for you to just extend, make, the, make a tunnel, extend the tunnel forwards into the cornea and then bring the pieces out and complete the case. So in your course, are you recommending that people do this for the harder cataracts or, or they can use it whenever the situation demands? Yeah, uh, you know, that's uh, uh, an interesting question uh, because you can actually do MSICS or SICS in any case of any, any type of cataract. Mm -hmm. But uh, for uh, softer cataracts, you don't actually um, harness all the advantages mm -hmm. because you can very easily do uh, FACO in a soft cataract. But yes, in a situation where you don't have a machine 
or uh, you're in a place which doesn't have all the access to, you know, FACO machines and whatever, or let's say you are having a single FACO machine and you're working and it stops working. Mm -hmm. In all these situations, it does act as a nice backup. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, you've done a, a very detailed column in EuroTimes with right. a lot more information on this, so I would direct our viewers to that if they want to learn more, and also to your YouTubes. Thank you. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Thank you, Sean. Thanks. For more information on this, please visit us at eurotimes.org.